Right, so, I went on Twitter the other day, as you do, like, everyone who is depressed and wants to die goes on goes on Twitter. Twitter is kind of the place where where fun goes to die. And I mean that I mean that in the nicest way possible. Um it's kind of it, it's kind of the it's kind of perfect that Elon Musk wants to buy it because he deserves to to run the site where where fun goes to die. Um but yeah, I was I was going through Twitter. I was uh, looking at um, Casual Avenger uh, put up, uh, made a tweet uh, saying, "Where's Where's Winter Soldier? Where's any kind of information?" And Brian's response when we've been told Brian Wagner, uh, I think head of PR. Marvel games or head of PR for for Avengers anyways um, his response to being asked when a character we've been told will come out late 2022 uh, on the 1st of November two months before 2023 uh, his response was uh, he's not ready yet We'll have more information in time. We'll have more information at some point. Not even soon. You know, <laughs> soon gives you, like, soon is, like, within the next week or so. You know? What does we'll have more information when we're ready mean? You've had... You've had since Jane came out. You've had since... Realistically, I don't even count the... Um, what's it called? Um, the previous... The last mission, the also Monica Raffaccini thing. I don't count that as a as a piece of content. That's a throwaway to me. Um, the last actual thing that we got, like tangible thing we got, was Jane. And the last tangible piece of playable content that we got, the last like thing worth a damn, was War for Wakanda. After that. The raid, yeah, that's fine. Um, the raid got a lot of people together, actually. And that was a big thing for the game. And possibly the most... Uh, the most positive thing to ever happen to the game is War for Wakanda and the Wakanda raid that came out after it. And obviously, your reaction to the most positive thing to happen to the game is, right, that's it, we're not doing any more of those. Because Marvel's Avengers, much like Twitter, is where fun goes to die. <laughs> so, yeah, I just don't understand a lot of the, the the business stuff or a lot of the decisions behind Avengers and what kind of game it wants to be. Because this everything that's everything that's had a positive response is everything that they've said they're not going to do anymore and everything that's had a negative response like Jane Foster being an Echo character like um the uh, uh, like taking out operations and replacing them with these hero events uh that's what they've said they're going to do more of why surely you want to keep doing the stuff that that you know, is getting the positive response, and surely you want to look at. Um, I know you have several characters in the pipeline that you've been working on since before the game came out, and you have content that you've been working on since before the game came out that you still have 
tracked to to come out. But why don't why don't you just why don't you just say Blue Marvel's been added to the list? We've seen that there's been a, a lot of fan hype for Blue Marvel. We'll put him on the list. A lot of fan hype for Sentry. We'll put him on the list. You know, a lot of a lot of fan hype for for a lot of characters, and you know, we'll put them on the list and give genuine reasons why characters may may or may not be in the game like give a, a genuine reason for doctor strange just come out and say the engine we have at the moment isn't powerful enough to do to make doctor strange feel satisfying and feel like doctor strange our engine isn't isn't you know, up to scratch for to make Wanda feel like Wanda and to be satisfying. Just be honest about <laughs> about the the state of the game. Don't don't say, oh, we don't we don't believe that magic could could tangibly exist. What the fuck is Zawavari then? <laughs> Why is Doctor Voodoo or Brother Voodoo and why is Doctor Strange referenced? That whole scene where Zawavari is talking to Wanda, talking to Loki, talking to uh, Wong. <laughs> like, what? Like, you can't just lie and say, oh, we don't, we don't believe that that magic exists in this universe. No, you can't be bothered to update your game engine. That's the truth. The truth is they can't be bothered to update their game engine or they don't want to switch engines. That's why we've gotten so many uh, street-level characters and why every character upcoming is street-level to city-level. You know, not not many, like... uh, global scale characters outside of outside of maybe Thor and Jane and Hulk weirdly uh, I think Hulk would kind of fit in like Hulk would kind of fit in a like global power set his animations are, are like more bombastic than like a Hawkeye's is. But yeah, that's why the characters that we have been getting haven't been like super top tier characters yet, because the engine just isn't good enough to run those characters or to to do those characters justice. That that's what I can kind of believe. But we're at a point now, and my uh, point that I made on stream yesterday, because uh, Multiverses just had its its big content update, its big content refresh that I did a video on, um, and I said that, that that game was stepping in the right direction with like small updates to its single player content that was like showing here's something, here's what we have in mind. We're, uh, here's what we have in mind. Do you like this? Do you want more? And that's a game that's only a few months old, and it's already had more new characters than Avengers, which is two years old. And it's already had, like, I know I'm comparing a triple A game to a to a uh, indie run kind of. Um, free to play console game but it is mind boggling to think I've had my problems with multiverses I still don't think arcade mode is is there at the moment but at least they're trying at least they, they constantly have stuff in at least there's communication there here we've had a year of radio silence no dev streams no blogs well if we get a blog it's the the week or a few days before an update and it doesn't tell us anything more 
than anything more than we already knew. Uh, we have like a picture of Winter Soldier and saying this is the new character. We we don't even get uh, skins. Um, we don't even get skins like properly promoted outside of outside of like on the day that they come out. We don't get like like the weekly blogs. They're useless. They're useless now. So, and Brian, bless him, because you can tell that the the guy means well. He means well. Obviously, he does. Like, I don't think there is a... I don't think there is a, there's a bad bone in his body. But, like, I, I think the passion's gone. I think, I think it's just either either the passion's gone, or it was never there to begin with, or it's misplaced. Because like, you need to be able to take an L, and the most recent villain sector was an L, was the the one of the bigger ones. Because like you had you had the um, beating the odds villain sector, which which was a good mission in its own right, and I can I will give them that. Like the early twenty twenty one stuff, like from April to August September, was great. Twenty twenty one was actually a good year for Avengers because it had a new thing coming out each month. They weren't massive things, apart from War for Wakanda, um, which comparatively was big. Uh, and the operation comparatively to everything else was big. So having that, having all of that come out in in the space of a few months is great, was, was really good. Because we were getting something different and something new every month. You know, we were getting new events, and they felt fresh because they were they were coming out, and we were getting new missions, and we were getting, you know, and we got the OLT, and we got War for Wakanda, and we got uh, Future Imperfect, and it was it was genuinely looking back, looking back, it was great. It was a great year for the game, really. I don't. It didn't fix problems, and it arguably put more problems into the game bugs-wise, especially with beating the odds, because that that bug of showing players' IP addresses is dangerous. You know, it puts uh, content creators at risk, not just not necessarily it puts their data at risk and it puts like the people that are doing the groundwork are the content creators they're the people that are you know bringing life to the game because if people weren't making content on your game then you can kiss any life goodbye right so why then would you uh, would you allow and put out something that will show the IP address and put you know the the cyber security of your of your your kind of unofficial PR team at risk. <laughs> why why would you do that? Like it, even without even without that, it's a pretty big fucking thing to miss. But. That's neither here nor there now. It got fixed relatively... It got fixed extremely quickly. It was like the first day... It was like day one that it it got fixed. But the point is it should never have been a problem in the first place. That should never... There should never be like titles or or titles of headlines uh, of like Marvel's Avengers shows your IP address in newest... In newest uh, update. But... 
the difference between 21 and 2022 is we got stuff. We got things. And this year, it feels like we've gotten less than the bare minimum. We've gotten, you know, Jane, who was a Echo character, who was, like, a carbon copy of of Thor, like, down to skins and emotes, right? And we've had minimal cutscenes be made. We've had, you know... And if there was clarity and if there was anything told to us at the start of the year, told to the player base at the start of the year, like, if there was anything said to us at the start of the year like oh 2020 2022 isn't going to be a big year for for avengers we're not going to have that much content out this year because we have huge things planned for 2023 we have huge things plans that won't plan that won't be done until 2023 all we need is like that and that is as simple as one tweet it's as simple as like putting a a blog out as as simple as an email right and the fact that we didn't get that at the start of the year and the fact that we didn't get like the the deal between square and embracer group is meaning that we're is meaning that we're putting less time into making content because we don't know the future of the game like that we would believe that and we would be we would be understanding i feel like the major the grand majority of players would be understanding that yeah if the if it's up in the air whether your game will make it through the year you wouldn't want to put all of your eggs into this basket when the plug could be pulled any moment we would understand that but because no one has said anything about it, no one has officially made any kind of um, any kind of thing about. <laughs> All we have is like Brian every every so often saying, "I'm recording lines with Black Widow's voice actor. I'm recording lines with Kamala's voice actor. I'm doing some work with." With uh, Cap's voice actor, you know, and that doesn't help anyone anywhere, any any time, because all all of the response to that will be is, "What is this for? When will this come out?" Right? Voice lines. What kind of what kind of voice lines? Where? What? What's the context? Who else is in that scene? Who are they talking to? What? What's the plan? And that that's the biggest thing. Because I don't think there is one. And that's my problem. There's been no... This game is going to die. And nothing is going to be resolved in the plot. Nothing's going to be resolved anywhere. We're not even going to get a full Avengers roster before before the game is like pulled from before the carpet's pulled from underneath it. The carpet's already been pulled. The game's on uh, on life support, and either either like you get the biggest the biggest guy in the room with the most air in his lungs to resuscitate. Or you pull the plug and you say, and you let it go and you say, we tried, it didn't work, we'll move on to stuff that we know and have your fun with Midnight Suns, have your fun with Spider-Man 2, have your fun with Wolverine, have your fun with God of War Ragnarok, have your fun with, with Gotham Knights, which I've, I've heard is just as bad if 
a little bit less bad because it's not a um, games as a service. It's not a live service. And that's the biggest thing. I feel like a live service game will always will always under deliver because they always have the they always have the scapegoat or they always have the the excuse of oh the game's not done yet. We're always constantly working on it. There's always constant updates and there's always there's always things being added. I'd argue Avengers doesn't have that scapegoat because we've gone a whole year now where nothing has been added. You know, um, Jane didn't add anything. She's a carbon copy of Thor. Everything she does, Thor does. Every uh, Everything Thor does, she does. She doesn't add any new status effects. There was no new content com- that came with her. There's been no raid that's come out this year. There's been no like new status effects. There's no, uh, been nothing that's changed gameplay. The biggest thing we had was the hero buffs, and that was just numbers went up. Big numbers go big, you know, and that doesn't really fix any issues or any problems that anyone has with the game. The biggest, the only thing that changes is players are more frustrated because characters are getting more fun to play and characters are are getting better, but the content isn't reflecting that. And why give us new toys if the playground stays the same? Eventually, eventually you're going to have too many toys. And the playground's not going to be big enough. And that's when we hit that point at the end of last year. We had a point with we hit that point with Spider Man, and you haven't changed it. And how much is Winter Soldier going to change it? Ha- a new end game piece of content may fix that problem. But it won't fix that problem for long enough that you need to have something you need to have something lined up when people are done with Winter Soldier and when people are done when people have stopped having fun with Winter Soldier, there needs to be something else after it. And I think that C D overestimates the amount of fun that they can that players can have with new characters or with new content or with, with anything. They probably overestimate how good something is by expecting, hey, they're probably going to get half a year out of this. You know, hey, they're probably going to get three months out of this. Like Hawkeye was, it was, what, April to August of of, uh, Hawkeye to Black Panther. And then from Black Panther to Spider-Man. To be fair, there was content coming in between those three. Um, And it was a raid in between Black Panther and Spider-Man. Or it was a raid that came with Spider-Man. But it was was in between, technically. Because you wouldn't be able to get Spider-Man ramped up to play the raid day one. So you'd be playing the raid with with more than likely Black Panther or other characters, probably a flyer. Um, but yeah, I think the Avengers uh, or CD overestimate how how much fun people are going to get out of get out of any piece of content, and they overestimate how much they overestimate how much you're going to get out of any content in this game. And that's why it's so long between each thing. There's there's a multitude of problems. There's the Embracer deal and the dubious, the dubious nature of the game's actual future. There's... Which I think that isn't actually a problem anymore. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why the Embracer deal isn't a problem anymore. Because it's been over a month since the Embracer deal went went through. And we've heard... We've had no one officially say, yes, they're still doing stuff with, with Avengers. But we've had no one say no. And as I said earlier with Brian 
still doing doing work recording voice lines he wouldn't still be be recording voice lines if embracer had pulled the pro, uh, pulled the plug so i think the embracer deal going through i think the green light is either has either been they've either gotten the green light or the green light is a 100% guarantee or pretty much a above 90% guarantee that they're going to that they're going to get the green light the biggest the biggest thing for me is the lack of communication because all of these problems with the game itself would be would be understandable if we had any sort of communication if if they're working on something big that's going to be dropped in february or going to be dropped in march and all we had to do was wait a calendar year and then boom massive mind-blowing content dropped in march then i think that can be not necessarily forgiven or not necessarily uh, justified because you can't go a calendar year without having any content. And to be to be fair, there's been there's been things. There's been character buffs, which tuning characters does take a while. And Jane is a thing that exists. Like you can say that that's there. There's been new skins every week. Um, and that's the only thing they've been consistent with. And there was a new mission, and there's been new new villain sectors and new missions put in, uh, put in places on the map. And there's been a huge UI update. So technically, there hasn't been nothing. And Nick Fury, Nick Fury, the whole where is Nick Fury storyline got got wrapped up this year which was extremely disappointing. I thought there was going to be something there. He just shows up and then it's completely a new player thing, which is stupid. Uh, go away. <laughs> With uh, That is the most disappointing thing that, that's happened this year. Outside of, outside of the lack of content and everything, it's just Nick Fury just shows up after after doing a whole operation of where is Nick Fury? Oh, he's behind he's behind the Cree wall, and you need to get rid of the Cree to get Nick Fury back. To oh hi, I'm Nick Fury. Hi. Um, unless there's a twist with that coming up coming up in a in a future uh, content update, I've. I am very disappointed with that. Like the Nick Fury that's in the Helicarrier, uh, Helicarrier isn't Nick Fury, or it's a Skrull, or something. Do something interesting with that. I don't think that's what they're doing. I don't think I don't think that's the case. I hope it is, but I don't think it is. Um, but yeah, the. Uh, if there is something huge coming out next year, there better be. And you know what? If I I can't see myself getting back into the game like I was with with War for Wakanda and like I was in 2021. This year has just pounded me and beaten me to a to a veritable pulp. To be honest, uh, so much, so much about what Avengers has done this year has just pissed me off to no end. And it's all communication and it's all like the the reaction to any kind of criticism at all. Like if you say anything, anything constructively constructive or any kind of criticism at all, you're hounded and you're told you're told like you're you're told like a bad take or you're a terrible human being for suggesting that there's even a problem with this or you're you're a fucking asshole for for calling for calling devs lazy and 
like I'm not calling anyone lazy. I'm just saying that that this specific piece of content felt rushed. It didn't feel lazy. Uh, that there was there was obviously time put into it, and obviously like there's there's no bugs. Like there's like it feels like with the the newest piece of content uh the newest villain sector which i i apologize that i can't remember the name of but the thing with that is there was obviously thought put behind it there was thought in the two monica fight uh not in the actual gameplay part of it but there was thought part in it put into the also monica rappuccini thing and someone somewhere thought that that was funny and the majority of the player base thought ha that that's got a chuckle and if you got a chuckle from from that fair enough it pissed me off but if you got a chuckle from it that's fine you're allowed to find find stuff funny that's not necessarily very funny but for me I, for me, um, the game needs needs something like a either like full on zap the life back into this game or kill it. Let the past die. Kill it if you have to. Go full Kylo Ren on this. I don't care at this point. I have very little. I have very little feeling towards this game anymore. I feel like I've been in an abusive relationship for the last two years. And I know that sounds overdramatic, but I genuinely feel like uh, feel like I've been in an abusive relationship for two years. And it's got to stop somewhere. And Winter Soldier, I feel like, if, if anything's going to save the game, it's not going to be that. But also... I do have some kind of hope that cloning labs or cloning lab is going to is going to do something to generate a little bit of hype. You know, you've got you've got uh, Doom Killer and the Avengers community that will probably make some kind of charity thing around it. It will probably drop around the time that I'm doing Thankmas. So, if if anything, we'll get to raise some money for charity watching this game slowly die. That's worst case scenario. Best case scenario is that that game mode is actually amazing and it teases and we see like the clone tanks... And they, and then it teases like three million possible things that could be coming in the future, and we get to see more Cree and like a uh, Cree Sentry kills Modok at the end, and then we see Ronan the Accuser. And he's like, he's like, I will be back in several months around the time of Captain Marvel's uh, thing. Captain Marvel's expansion. I will be back in in several months to judge <laughs> to judge the planet. Uh, kind of like what what Judgment Day was just now. Kind of tie that in, but also you know much smaller scale and with Ron and the Accuser instead of whatever the Celestials were. But yeah, I. I have it's a mixed bag. I I feel nothing towards this game, but I want to feel something. But I also kind of kind of want the game to die at this point because like, what can you honestly do? Even if you have a Taken King style big um, resurgence. Of quality, right? Even if you have that, 
who's going to care at this point? You could have the best content update and no one will can because no one will play it because you've already drained the life out of every player of the game and no one's going to care anymore. So, I mean, I'm going to continue to to put time into the game. I'm not going to sink any money into it because I don't think I don't think they've done anything to deserve my money. <laughs> the limited as it is, there's a cost of living crisis. I don't have I don't have the the disposable income to put into a game that I feel nothing for, you know. So, you know. Hopefully you got you guys enjoyed this video. It's gone on for a fucking while. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully it's a little bit more positive. See you guys in the next one. Peace.